Hey everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my reading wrap up for the month of March 2019. However, a quick word before I start talking about the book, and that is I have my interest and enthusiasm for making videos back finally. After quite a few months where I've barely been producing videos other than these monthly wrap up videos, I now actually do want to make videos again. So um, I should be producing a weekly video again. Um, as of this week onwards, which I'm really happy about. Anyway, let's get started talking about the books. Um, March was a really good reading month. I read 15 books in total. 10 of them I thought was really good. Five of them were debatable quality, at least in my mind, of course. This is obviously purely uh, subjective to my opinion, of course, not on the overall finished quality of the book. And the first of those books, and I'm talking about these books in the order that I liked them, from the least liked to the most, roughly anyway. And the first book is Headhunters by Joe Nesbo. This is the first book I've ever read by Joe, Joe Nesbo. And despite the fact that it did not work for me at all, I didn't particularly enjoy it, it will not be the last. I actually do have a few other books uh, by him in the Harry Hole series, which are detective thrillers. This is a sort of murder thriller. This is about a man who is a corporate headhunter. He finds um, prospective um, sort of high-powered executives for his company clients. Also, however, he is an art thief because everybody has to have a hobby. And the one painting that he wants to steal the one day, he realises is owned by somebody he might not be the best idea to steal from, let's say, and things start spiralling outward from there in a really strange and bizarre way, from his point of view. There is a murder, various other crimes are committed, and sort of chaos ensues, essentially. Now, I liked the premise of it, and indeed, the evil book was fairly okay, and the world building was good, however, I did not like the characters. The characters I thought they were being developed one way and then actually realised the not they sort of failed to live up to what I hoped for because the characters are frankly unpleasant most of the time once you got to know them and then you realise actually they're kind of really stupid and weirdly developed though actually they seem immature and self-centred to a like, ridiculous level and it makes the book really hard to like and frankly I didn't like it for that reason you know the characters well, unpleasant, not in a meant to be unpleasant way, really. I don't think so. Sadly, this book did not work. The second book that I read was Deus Ira by Philip K. Dick and Roger D. Lasney. Now, this is, as you may know, a project that I'm working on over the last sort of six months of the year where I'm trying to work through every Philip K. Dick book that I happen to own because so many years ago now I was very enthusiastic on buying many Philip K. Dick books because at that point in time I read a couple of his books and thought that, that they were good and because they were uh, good offers on the books I bought many more. Unfortunately those few books were relatively uh, one-off by comparison because actually very few of his four length novels I have enjoyed and I didn't enjoy this one frankly. I like his short stories, four length novels, <sighs> not really. This one is again a really bizarre and strange concept. An artist is searching for God. Um, a society wants to create a portrait of God, or at least their version of God. I'm not going to say what God is in this concept, but it's not exactly what you think. This is after sort of a big uh, devastating war and you know, the world is in a different state than it is now. And they send a a painter who has no arms or legs to paint this portrait and is using like this weird construction which enables him to obviously travel and indeed paint and do everything. It's really bizarre and weird. I didn't see the point and frankly I have a feeling Philip K. Dick himself may not have actually understood the point of this when he was writing it. Roger that uh, the last name might have, but Philip K. Dick probably didn't because I often find he, he seems to have a nasty habit of sort of 
meandering off point and not really getting back to it. This didn't suffer from that as badly, maybe because obviously it wasn't just his work, but it still felt strange. It had its moments, and I did like the overall concept, but the actual, yeah, again, the overall sort of pacing of the book, and especially the um, ending, didn't work, frankly. And it was, and I'm, I'm glad I read it just because, at least now, I read more of the Philip Eddick's I own, but that's about the only reason I'm glad I read it, frankly. I wouldn't overly recommend this unless you're a Philip Eddick fan. The next book is not just one book, but this is actually three books, and this is an omnibus, and that is DJ Compton. And in particular, this is Sim for Joy, The Steel Crocodile, and Ascendancies. Now, these are all full length novels, albeit fairly short full length novels, put together in this omnibus edition. This is one of the sort of accompanying lines to the SF Masterworks, um, Omnibus Gateways. And I'll talk about each book briefly on its own. So there is Sim for Joy. Sim for Joy is an interesting concept. I didn't like the execution, basically. Whereas, whereas a scientist discovers a way to essentially sort of replicate humans' uh, emotions. Things like, well, one thing, joy, sadness, happiness. And this, whilst he thinks it's good, Obviously, it can have some really negative effects because people won't want to go out and experience the real life causes of those emotions themselves. They'll just have this um, essentially sort of thing attached to the head, and they'll just sit there and have the sort of this stuff sort of, sort of almost like scanned into the brain, and then that's the emotion you feel, not actual emotion. The concept is interesting. The execution failed because, frankly, the characters were sort of meaningless, you know, they, there was no emotion to the characters or building to the characters, they just were there for this idea, which, I mean, it was a good idea, but you needed some characters that had some kind of interest in them, as they were, they were all replaceable characters that were also really forgettable, and, I mean, I actually can't remember any character names, frankly, I mean, to prove my point. I mean, I liked it as such, just, it felt like, on a few quite large levels. The second book, Steel Crocodile, is about again at least going by the blurb. The blurb's not entirely accurate, but this is about a um, an artificial intelligence system that governs the choices that the governments of Earth now uh, follow, and it starts making some strange decisions. Nobody knows why, and they think the machine may be wrong. They're not sure. This is not AI in the way that we see today because it's not really AI as far as I see because it's more it's computing machine yes but it's not actually you know it's not uh, Skynet for instance you know from the terminal this is not a sentient aware system this is just a computational machine which they can turn on or off and this leads to some pretty significant events within this world I did like the idea of this the writing with a was more solid. I still wasn't a big fan of this though, but it, it was far more enjoyable and the ideas and the writing was more solid than uh, Sympha Joy. Then we have Ascendancies. Ascendancies was not very interesting at all. Frankly, I really didn't enjoy this one in slice. This is about an alien race who comes down to Earth. They are very benevolent and every now and again they have this dust fall, this substance, which if you humans uh, refine it and burn it in a certain way, it is an incredibly powerful fuel source. It replaces basically every other fuel source we have. Ago, it's extremely powerful. However, the aliens' price for this um, dust is people after each dust storm just go missing randomly all over the earth and in large numbers. But the numbers change. Sometimes it might be very small numbers. Sometimes it might be enormous numbers like tens of millions, hundreds of millions. The concept I really liked but as you may be predicting me to say and I will indeed say the execution I thought failed. The characters again I mean this whole collection basically I thought I think suffers from this. The characters were unlikable and not very interesting and 
if he'd written characters that actually had some emotion behind them, this book would have worked. I mean, books can work on concept alone without the characters. And I've read enough books like that. But sometimes they do need some characters. This doesn't have that. I mean, I like the collection, but overall this didn't work out very well. You know, it had its moments, but that's about all I can say. The next book I want to talk about is More Than Human by Theodore Sturgeon. Now this, I actually really enjoyed this. The concept is weird and a bit bizarre, as is the case often with some older science fiction. Obviously Theodore Sturgeon is one of the classic great science fiction writers, as you might say, although it's certainly not essential reading. Um, this, the concept behind it is quite simple, and that is a group of very strange uh, misfits, for instance, a baby who is uh, telekinetic, a, a two twins who can essentially teleport around the place at will, which are, and they also cannot speak, and a few other generally very young um, strange characters have all these odd abilities, not like the rest of humanity, and they find each other and come together in this collective and realise that they don't fit in and they try to make a different kind of life for themselves but it, things happen basically and it goes in a strange way actually in the middle of the book because um, most of the book is focused on them getting together and then at one point in the book the focus switches to a different character and a different viewpoint and I was a bit spoiled by this and frankly to start with I was like oh no this is going to be terrible because it appeared like it and then actually as you read on it's like oh actually that does work it's still strange I still think it could have been done slightly differently but overall that this weird switch in perspective which I was not expecting did work and actually I did quite enjoy this because it talks about basically um, social constructs as we see and fitting into the society, you know, about misfits being outside, people in the centre fitting in perfectly. How do you integrate them? At least that's how I saw it. Got some interesting ideas with some good writing, and I did enjoy this actually. Next up is another omnibus, and this time this is by Theodore Sturgeon again. Basically, I read uh, that masterwork, and then I decided I'd read this great big yellow omnibus by him. Now again, this has three books, The Dreaming Jewels, To Marry Medusa, and Venus Plus X. Basically, I liked The Dreaming Jewels a lot. I thought To Marry Medusa was good, it had its flaws, but it was still good. Venus Plus X was terrible, frankly. The Dreaming Jewels is an interesting one because it's about a boy who essentially has a not very good upbringing. He runs away, joins the circus, but it's not entirely normal in the digital sense, let's say. And some very strange events happen. I don't really want to say too much because it's fairly short. I mean, this is a fairly short um, omnibus of three full-length novels, but short full-length novels. So if I say too much, it'll give things away. Suffice to say, it's very strange, but it worked really well. The Dreaming Jewels, to start with, I was wondering when... Uh, the, these jewels were going to come into place because and how they have actually made any sense because for a long time it doesn't come into it and then it's like oh yes now it makes sense the title does make um fit into the plot rather well and i really enjoyed this because it has some interesting characters that are very well developed in a remarkably short time the world is interesting and very dark and the plot was also again really solid and enjoyable so i really enjoyed that one to my medusa the second uh, novel within this is a curious one because this is about a sort of sentient uh hive mind intelligence from outer space it sends a spore to earth it affects some one single man and then this intelligence is then trying to become accustomed to the fact that uh it's inside one man who doesn't automatically have uh, psychic links with the rest of humanity which is the way that this hive mind intelligence is used to dealing with people you know, and it's puzzled by how humanity can have developed 
all the technology that we have and made this board that we live on without being a hive mind how do how do people make this without being a hive mind who doesn't know and it's a curious um sort of inspection and look into what a different kind of outlook on life is so we are individuals that work together what would a um a collective the force to work and view things from a single point, you know, the verse of what we are, how would that deal with it, what would it be like, and how would it manage. I like this book, and it has some interesting concepts. The characters were a bit strange at points, which slightly let it down, but not by much, because overall it was a good, solid book. And finally, we have Venus plus X, which was just very strange. It's about a guy who wakes up one day, and he finds out that he's, not where he, he thought he was, you know, he's not where he actually went to sleep and he's he thinks he's in some kind of heaven. It's obviously not Venus comes into play, you know, the planet. And you know that's not a spoiler because it's entitled Franklin. <laughs> this didn't work for me. The characters were again unlike the other first two, not very well developed I thought. The ideas were there but they weren't developed enough they just sort of lost the way a bit i thought which was a shame because that could have been really good and it kind of wasn't but you know two out of three i think it's pretty good for the other the next book that i'm going to read is a buddy read that i read with andrea over at infinite text i will link her channel in the description box below of course and this is the dragon reborn by robert jordan Yes, this is the third book in the Wheel of Time series. Uh, this is a 14 book epic fantasy series. Robert Jordan wrote this series. He wanted to write his own sort of epic Lord of the Rings type um, plot spanning many, many books, which he obviously achieved. Many people love this series. I read the first seven books out of the 14 um, three or four years ago. At the time, the books weren't working for me very well because I just wasn't in the mood I think for big epic fantasy at the moment they're working much better for me now and obviously the fact that I'm buddy reading them with Andrea and we are talking about them and such is greatly helping as well because I, I actually enjoyed this I didn't overly enjoy it as much before it had its moments but now this is much better um, now I'm not going to bother talking about this in any great depth because this is talked about a lot online Frankly, you know, it's, people have viewed this series a lot. Andrea, well, um, is doing a monthly video about each book as we buddy read them. So I will link her video if she's done it by the time this video is uploaded in the description box below. But I did like this. It's a good, solid epic fantasy series that I quite enjoyed. So the next two books were by Jonathan L. Howard. And those are The Brothers Cabal and... The Fall of the House of Cabal. This is books four and book five in the Jonathan Cabal Necromancer series. This series is only five books long. There may be more books, but I think he does pretty much finish it off at the end of book five in a fairly good, solid way. So, think, frankly, I'm hoping that he does end it. It's been a few years since this last book, I mean, four years, so I reckon it is complete now. Which I'm happy with because this is a good solid fantasy series it's a very dark fantasy it's about the main character uh, Johannes Cabal who is a necromancer he kills people in the course of the book so they're not for any random reason you know it's normally for a fairly good reason as far as he's concerned he's designed to be a, a character that you don't entirely like in, in some ways because but you do understand the reason that he's doing the things are understandable. He's not an evil person. He's not doing it for personal power or gain. He's doing it for something else, more on a far more personal level. And it's like, you can forgive him for it to a certain degree. These two books, I'm not going to talk about them individually. I might talk about the series as a overall in a video. I'm not sure yet. But these are just really two solid, dark fantasy books with very dark, and grim humour but it does work and they made me really laugh out loud 
and they're just fun. I mean, they have the they have dark moments, they have light moments, they have action, they have adventure. They've got a lot in them, and I'm greatly um, appreciative that I actually read these. And I like to thank Andrea Infinite Text for getting me interested in the first of these books because they are actually really good. The third from last book that I'm going to talk about is Record of a Space Born Few by Becky Chambers. This was finally released in a paperback in the UK, hence I can finally buy it, which I've did because this is a brand new book and really and I'm really glad I did because this was a very, very good book which I greatly enjoyed just as much as the first two books. Obviously the first book was very um popular on booktube the small angry way the the long way to a small angry planet which was very successful this i like just as much but for slightly alternate alternative reasons now this follows amongst other characters one who is the sister of one of the main characters from the first book long way to a small angry planet this is a very different environment because this is about a um, the Exodus fleet, which is the human um, sort of cargo ships, essentially, you know, the generation ships which brought humanity across space, they have finished their job now, many years ago, and now they're used as, they're still used for people to live there, but it's a different type of sort of um, social system that these ships have got because obviously people live on board ships. It's about recycling and about managing with limited resources but when you have planets now colonized all over the place how do you justify living on ships which are by many standards so limited and that's not even moving I mean, is a ship a ship when it's not even moving and indeed in many cases the engines and things don't even work anymore so it's a curious concept and this is about a disaster at the start of the book that happens it kills many thousands of people in the Exton fleet that are living there and this mixes things up let's say within the society because people are starting to question what is the point of this society that they've got here why don't they just abandon the Exodus fleet and live on an actual planet which has got a normal atmosphere that you don't need to you know, regulate with machines food that you can grow in the soil without needing hydroponics this sort of thing the concepts in it which are far more than I've gone into here are really intricate and nuanced the writing is fantastic and the emotion which Becky Chambers managed with the previous two books is again uh, prevalent and very really significant and frankly I really enjoyed this book and I would really recommend it because it's just brilliantly well written with great concepts and well executed you can't go wrong with this part of me. the next book is a book that i was only sent um recently i think it was in february by the publisher gallant and that is no way by sj morden he always writes under his uh full name of simon morden depending on what type of book i believe it is that he's writing this is a science fiction uh filler he, he it is set on Mars in the first book him and a team of seven other um, lifetime um, prisoners they're all in prison for very serious and pretty horrible crimes are sent to Mars to basically build the initial sort of base in preparation for an actual proper you know fully qualified and trained team to go up and actually live there and they'll be given a chance of either spend your time in, in a prison cell for the rest of eternity or we'll just ship you off to Mars you'll build a base there and then you'll be locked up essentially there instead it's like, which, which do you want? freedom here where, you, where you've got to abide by all our rules or, or a slight little bit of freedom as such on Mars they take it things go in a slightly strange way this book is about uh, the aftermath of the events from the first book I don't want to say too much because it, it will spoil the plot of the first book very heavily which I've talked about and indeed I did a review of One Way uh, separately last year but suffice to say the main character Frank Kittredge is a good solid character 
the surprises are there. I didn't think they would be because I thought about after that the way the first book went, how could it be how could you have a surprise or any kind of twist? Surely but he managed it actually quite well. So I was actually quite I was impressed by this and I really enjoyed it. So if you like the first book one way, then you will like this. If you haven't read that then obviously don't touch this because this will make this is just frankly strange, let's put it like that. But I would recommend one way and then if you like it, obviously this as well. Finally, the last book I'm going to talk about is Luna Moon Rising by Ian MacDonald. This was one of my anticipated books of 2019, sent to me by the publisher, same as the previous book, um, which is Gollum, so thank you to them, and I really enjoyed this. Although, not quite as much as I enjoyed the first two books in what is now confirmed as a trilogy, so this is the last book in this world. The first two books, I thought the writing was just as good, but there's something somehow special about them. I mean, the second book was a different way than the first, but that still worked. This, um, there was something about it that I didn't think quite worked quite as well, personally. The characters were still perfectly solid and um, very, very well developed. The society, both on the moon and on Earth, which you get to experience both, is again heavily developed. But the reasoning behind the characters, I thought, was, I mean, it was good, solid reasoning. You know, the characters uh, the, and the motivations do things for, like, for believable reasons, but there was something off about that part of the book I found. I don't know why, maybe I was in the wrong frame of mind. I mean, I will probably reread this, weirdly not at the end of this year again, because I feel as though I read it and I might not have been in the right frame of mind and that affected it, which considering how much I liked the first two books in this trilogy, I want to reread it just so I give it another chance and see if it was just me or was it something fundamental about this book that I didn't see. So, I would recommend this if you've read the first two books. It is a good book. I did enjoy it, just, like I said, not quite as much as the first two. Which, you can see how much I enjoyed the first two, though that's still quite an endorsement, frankly. So I would recommend this book, and indeed, this um, trilogy for everybody, because it really is a good trilogy, fantastical world, about five um, big families on the moon, they control all the resources, their interactions with Earth, about you know, sending the resources back, lots of political intrigue and, you know, sort of underhanded dealings and such, and politics on the moon. It's well written, fun, and I really did overall enjoy the overall series, just this book was, I didn't quite level up to it. But then again, with, with a trilogy, sometimes one book will often not quite be the same level, which in this case, I've had to this one. So with that said, that is it for this very long uh, wrap up of March. If you've read any of the books, then please leave me a comment and we can have a discussion about them. If you have any book suggestions based on any of these that you think I might enjoy, then again, leave a comment. I'm always open and very eager to read new types of books by the authors and such. With that said, that is it for this video. Oh, and obviously all my social media links as well as a link to Andrea, who I mentioned in the video, can be found in the description box below. So with that said, that is it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.